Hey, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I have a little treat for you all. <laughs> I uh, completely sabotaged my low buy over the last two weeks. And while it's shameful and I'm not that happy about it now after the fact, um, in the process of sabotaging my low buy, I picked up quite a few products and I'm really excited to play with those <laughs> for you all today in this video. And I'm excited to just have them in general. So, you know, the last couple years, I've done such a good job. Actually, this last year specifically, I did a fantastic job sticking to my low buy. I barely bought anything. Most of it was just repurchases. If I did buy something, it was like my sparkly shades. But other than that, I didn't buy many complexion products. I wasn't buying much of anything. And then all hell broke loose. And that's usually what happens. I don't know what causes it. But I do really, really well, and then I do really, really bad for a week or two. So thankfully, I'm coming out the tail end of that really, really bad. Um, and now I have products to share with you. So if that sounds interesting, please be sure to stick around, hang out with me, watch me come up with this look. I'll give you my thoughts on the newer stuff I picked up. I have so much to share with you. I've got MAC, Too Faced, Pat McGrath. I've got the new Alter Ego palette, the new Halo Glow whatchamacallits from e.l.f. I've got all kinds of stuff. So if that sounds interesting, please be sure to stick around. But if you're just not making it to my channel and you're not subscribed yet, maybe you've been lurking a little bit. Maybe you've been watching other videos of mine. Or if while you're watching this video, if you decide you like it, you like my channel, please be sure to tap that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss future uploads. Let's get into this look. Don't mind the purple tongue. I was eating fruit snacks. <laughs> Okay, I think the way I want to do this is I'll introduce products as I'm getting to that step in my makeup routine. It just makes more sense to do it that way. So I do not have a primer product. So for today's video, I'm going to use the Milk Hydro Grip. This is a product that I like to use when I want my makeup to look really fresh and I want it to look, I don't know if I want to say dewy, but kind of juicy and not like super dried down matte. The only problem is when I use this base, my makeup won't last all day. And that's okay because I'm just filming a video for you all today. I'm not doing a full wear test. I do go back to work on Tuesday so I can try these products out long term, like throughout the day when I go back to work. But for right now, I'm just having fun with you all doing like a first impressions, seeing what the products look like when I apply them, the different shades and tones of different products. So I am so excited to play with makeup today. Anyhow, we're going to start with the Milk Hydro Grip. A really good alternative to this milk is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. It is a little stickier than this, a little thicker, but it still does a really great job and it gives the exact same effect. So if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on the milk, opt for the e.l.f. Primer. It's good stuff. I've been purchasing things off of Mercari lately. It's hit or miss over there. Sometimes I'll find really good deals and I'll find stuff cheaper than I would on sale, like on the retailer website or like, you know, the Sephora sale that's going on right now. So stuff that I could get cheaper that way, I decided to get off Mercari. The Milk Hydro Get Primer was one of them. You can get really good deals or you'll see people on there like price gouging, which is just ridiculous. I don't pay those any mind, but if I find a good deal, why not? I hate paying full price for things. And I suggest you guys don't do it either. There's always sales happening, whether it's on the retailer websites, on, you know, other websites like Mercari. And a lot of the times this stuff hasn't even been touched. It's brand new, still in the packaging. Okay. So this just leaves your skin real sticky and like healthy and dewy. Mm. So before I get into the foundation and concealer and all that jazz, I always go in with the Becca under eye corrector. It just does a really good job moisturizing underneath the eyes. It takes away some of that purple because I do have dark circles underneath the eyes. So let me go ahead and apply that and then we'll get into the rest of the face. This was not a repurchase. This is something that I'm just pulling from my collection right now. I just I have to have it. All right, the only other thing that I did is I took the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Vanilla Light 2 and I spot concealed because I had a really nasty blemish. Did a pretty good job, it was right there. Um, so I used that. That was something I already had in my collection. So I grabbed two base products. I picked up the new reformulated Lancome Tint It All Ultra Wear. I have already tried the original formula of this. And actually, I tried this one too the day that I bought it. I put it on and did a full face. And I really, really enjoyed the way that it wore. So 
I'm going to put that on today for you all. The other base product that I had picked up is the Purito Sisa Clearing BB Cream. I think that's how you pronounce it. I heard Taylor Wynn talking about this a very long time ago, and she loved this. I saw it on Amazon. I picked it up. I haven't actually worn this one yet, but I know this is more of like a BB cream. So I'm going for a little bit more coverage than that today. That's why we're going with Lancome. I was debating whether I wanted to use a brush or a sponge. By the way, I have mine in the shade 115C. I shade matched myself in Sephora, which is usually a joke because their lighting is horrendous. Um, but this actually matches me very well. So I ain't mad at it. So we'll have to see how this wears over top of the Milk Hydro Grip. I'm not sure if I've ever put Lancome over top of the Hydro Grip before. This is a matte foundation, and it is long-wearing, which is why I like it so much. I have really oily skin, just in case uh, you're new here or you didn't already know. I have oily skin, so it takes a special kind of foundation to wear long on me. So this looks really nice. It looks really fresh and not too crazy matte because it's got that Milk Hydro Grip underneath of it. So it looks really good. Oh, seriously? Mm. You not do that while I'm trying to film. So the foundation is a little bit dark for me, but it's not terrible. I've definitely shade matched myself a lot worse. So I'm pretty happy with the tone. It's just hard to find something that completely matches my skin tone. I think a lot of people have trouble with that, but I'm okay with this one. Okay, moving along to the next product that I picked up, the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spots Concealer and Serum. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It is a very thin consistency. It doesn't have like full, full coverage. I would say this is more like a medium coverage concealer. So the last time I used it, the first and last time I used it, I used it with my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. My daughter decided she was gonna mow the grass while I was filming because um, she's mad I won't buy her cheesy fries. So you're probably gonna hear a lot of noise in the background, but hey, at least she's doing something productive, right? So anyway, I might do that today. I might mix this with the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Let me grab that and we'll decide as we go here. First, I wanna show you, it does come with a little like brush on the end here, but I'm not one to use these types of brushes underneath the eyes or on my face. They're just a little odd. It's kind of super dense and like dome shaped. I'm just not a huge fan. The shade that I picked up is Light Cool 20. So if you open it up this way, it's got a doe foot on it, which I'm very grateful for. We're gonna start like this, and I'm gonna try to keep like minimal. I do think it's a really pretty concealer if you're gonna be doing like lightweight minimal makeup or like a no makeup type of look, but for full coverage, it's just not, it's not what it's for, you know? It's really pretty though, really fresh and dewy looking. I do like that. I can kind of see where it picked up a little bit of the foundation though, so that's not good. Dang it. So you might have to do that first. Use the concealer first if you purchase that. All right, going back over it with a little bit of my NARS. Really pretty, it's just not giving the kind of coverage I like, but that, that does look really nice. So earlier today, I kept here in the lawnmower going around and around the house and I was like, what the hell? So I go outside and my daughter and my son, my youngest two, they're just having a good old time doing donuts around the house. <laughs> what the hell? Like it costs money y'all to be running this lawnmower like that. Gas is not cheap. I don't hate the way this looks. Maybe I should scoot closer so you can see it. I'm always gonna have the bunching in the fine lines. I'm getting older. I'm almost 40. It's just the way it goes. Just really fresh and yeah, I like it. So I would say if you're looking for something to use on a lighter makeup day, you're not looking for super full coverage, you want the under eyes to look a little bit dewy, a little fresh, something very lightweight, this is a really nice concealer for that. Okay, so <laughs> this next category, uh, bronzers and contours and stuff like that, I'm not really sure what it is about this specific area of my makeup routine, but man, I was very drawn to these products during my shopping spree, so I have quite a few to share with you. Obviously at this stage, well, maybe not obviously for you all, but for me, obviously, I need to put down more creams before I fully powder my face. 
So I do have several cream products I can choose from. First and foremost, the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. This is not the luminous version. This is just the regular putty bronzer. And I have mine in the shade Tan Lines. The consistency of this really throws me off. So there is the shade. Looks rather nice, but it's a very dry, kind of dry formula. It's like a cream to powder formula. The next one that I picked up is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand. This is their contour shade in Fair Light. This one, I have attempted to use this before. Show you there. It's a very uh, cool toned contour shade. I really, really enjoy that shade. However, it dries down super fast. So I mean, if you don't work your little hands quickly, it's gonna stay wherever the hell you put it. And that scares me because I like to have a little bit of time to like manipulate the products and, and be able to move them around a little bit. But no, you put this down, if you don't move it right away, it's stuck. It's staying right there. So next up, I placed an order with She Glam. I did pick up some of their um, contour slash bronzer shades. This is in soft tan. I don't really like the component because it's a little like sponge on the end of this. There, how? How is this getting all the way down in the bottom of that? It's not. It's not reaching anywhere near the bottom. So it's like, how, how am I going to use all that's in there? I guess you just don't. <laughs> but let's check the color on that. Whoa. What did I say this was? Soft tan. Very, very cool tone. Almost looks like mud. Blends pretty nice. On my hand, haven't put it on the face yet. You can see how this one is a lot more cool toned than the e.l.f. one even. The e.l.f. one looks a little bit more like, like it's got like a pink or red undertone in there, which I typically like for a bronzer. Um, but in terms of a contour, is that dark? I feel like that's awful dark. Okay, and then the other shade I picked up was Golden Sun. Again, that little weird component. This is more of like the true bronzer shade. It's got a little bit more warmth to it. A lot more warmth to it. It's right there in the middle. Oh yeah, that's probably not gonna work. That looks very pumpkin pie. Not my favorite tone. Before we pick one of those cream products, I do wanna share with you the powder bronzers that I picked up. I'm telling you, I went ham the past couple weeks. I'm excited about it because I have new things to play with because I'm cycling through the stuff in my collection all the time. I do shop my stashes, as you guys know, but I like trying new products too, and it's been a while. So anyhow, I picked up the Too Faced um, Chocolate Bronzer. This is, is it their medium? It just says Chocolate Soleil. I'm not really sure which one it is, but this is a really nice tone. It's a little warm. You can see it right, yeah, it's very warm. I feel like I used this once just to kind of see what it would look like. It's just super, super warm. I don't mind a warm bronzer as long as it pulls more, like not orange, as long as there's like a pink or red undertone in there. That's the kind of bronzer that I really like because it goes well with my skin tone. Okay, the other bronzers I grabbed, this one I picked up. Did I tell you I grabbed the Too Faced from TJ Maxx? Yes, I did, and on a really good discount. Another bronzer that I picked up is the Hourglass Diffused Bronze Light which I've already gone through a whole mini size of this one, so I know I love it. It is such a good tone for someone that's my skin tone. And I got it off Mercari, so I got it for a really good price. Last but not least, I picked up two of the new MAC bronzers. These just came out. I saw them on their website. The tones on the website looked very rosy, very pink toned. Now I got really excited about it, so I picked two up and they're not quite as pink toned as I thought they were gonna be. So this one is in uh, medium rosy. It's the matte version and it's a little deep. I thought that it was gonna be, I just wasn't expect, I'll show you. It's the top swatch. Like I guess there is a rosy quality to it, but it's still pretty orange. And then the other one I picked up is their radiant version. This one is the light rosy. And this one I think looks deeper than the medium, the medium matte. I like the radiant tone better. It's the top swatch. That does have a pink quality to it. I'm really excited to use that one. So those are all the bronzers that I picked up. Now I need to decide what I'm gonna do for the cream bronzer slash contour. I think we should go ahead and try the contour 
from e.l.f. Let's just give it a shot and see what happens. I'm pretty sure this dried down too fast, but I'm gonna try it here with you guys. I'm gonna put the contour on with a brush since it's a cream product. I like using my e.l.f. 105 brush. This one doesn't exist anymore, which is a cry and shame because it is such a good brush. It's a stippling brush. I use it all the time. You guys probably have seen it before. So I'm gonna first put this on like a little tray and then dab my brush in there. I don't like placing it on my face first because I feel like it gives it the opportunity to get stuck and I, where it's at and I don't want that. But this is just like the Charlotte Tilbury. You squeeze on it, it comes out the top and let's see what happens here. This is not a bronzer though, it's a contour shade. So it's supposed to create that shadow, which <laughs> it did. Actually, that looks uh, pretty good, not bad. I think I put a little too much on this side, whoops. I'm gonna go back over that with my Beauty Blender just because I think I put a little too much on there. Okay, now that I have that down, I do wanna go over it with a bronzer. I'm debating which bronzer I wanna use because I wanna use something Oh, well, I only have two. I have two cream bronzers, the e.l.f. and that weird pumpkin pie one from She Glam. I don't want to do that one. So I'm going to attempt to use the e.l.f. and hope that it doesn't look crazy. I just dab my brush on in there. I actually kind of like this. It's not like your typical cream bronzers because of how powdery it feels after the fact. So it's not like moving stuff around or anything like that. It just kind of meshes in and then just hangs out there. I, I kind of like that like a whole lot. Wow, I wasn't expecting to like it that much. That's kind of terrible, but it's true. Oh, I really, really like the tone of that, right? Not bad. Okay, elf. Super affordable too. I'm pretty sure these bronzers are like seven bucks. I'm just gonna dab a little bit here. Kind of warm up the perimeter because it looks a little gray toned right now. But yeah, I am pleasantly surprised. I wasn't really expecting to like this because the formula feels so dry, but it is not shabby. It's easy to work with. I would highly recommend using a brush like I'm doing. I don't know how a sponge would do. I feel like it probably wouldn't move it around as much. Could be wrong, I don't know. I haven't tried it yet, but I, f I feel like that looks really nice. That's a definite win. So again, mine is in the shade Tan Lines. And you know what? The Halo Glow Beauty Wand, the contour shade from e.l.f. wasn't bad either. You just have to work a little quickly. So, in terms of blushes, this is the area where I went hardcore. <laughs> this month. I bought a lot of blushes. Okay, let's start off with this one. I grabbed this from Amazon and I got it for $13. This is the House Laboratories Bronzer in Spritz. And this was before she rebranded, but this was like their Casa Gaga release. So it was their fancier release, I guess you could say. And I thought this color was beautiful. The packaging is really cute. $13 I feel like is a really good deal for this. I think these were originally $25 to $30. So I wanted to try it out. And that's that there. Look how pretty. I also picked up two of the new Too Faced Cloud Crush Blurring Blushes. That's hard to say. Um, the one that I bought at Ulta is in the shade Head in the Clouds. First of all, I love the components. They're very... Like fancy looking, very luxe. They're very weighty. Anyhow, that's what that looks like. This smells exactly like if you have their face palette that comes with the six different shades of blush and highlight, that's what this smells like. I feel like I want to say it smells like chocolate, but I'm not 100% sure. It smells good. And that's that underneath. Just a softer blush. Really pretty. The second shade I actually picked up off of Mercari and I got it for a really good price point and it's never been used. It was still in the box and I'm the one that like swirled my finger in there, but it's brand new. Oh, and by the way, this one is in the shade Watermelon Rain, I believe. Yes, so pretty. Oh boy, that one's bright. That's the third shade there. I don't know what it is with me and bright blushes, um, but you'll notice a theme here because many of these are very either red-toned or bright, like loud blushes. 
it is what it is. It's just my thing, I guess. All of the rest of them are cream products, and I have a slew of them, so let's try to get through these rather quickly. I went ahead and removed my watch because we're going to have to... <laughs> we're going to need the space. So the first one I want to share with you is from Milani. This is their Cheek Kiss Blush in the shade 140 Rose Romance. And this is a very pink-toned blush. This is hard to do backwards, by the way. Ooh, very pretty, but also still very loud. <laughs> but you can see the glow. It's got a little bit of a luminescence to it. Blended really nicely, was very, how do I want to put it, movable? I don't know, really beautiful though. I'm excited to use that. And I feel like this little tube would last you an absolute lifetime. That's a lot for a liquid blush. That's, there's a lot of product in there. The next one I want to share with you is the new Beauty Blush Wands from Charlotte Tilbury. I also got this off Mercari. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I noticed they carved a little T in there, and I'm wondering if this was supposed to be like a tester, like wherever it came from. It was never used because the sponge applicator on it was completely white when it got here. I'm the one that squeezed the product into it, so I know it was, hadn't been used yet. Plus, you could tell how full it is. But it made me wonder why there was something engraved, like a T. I don't know if you guys can see that. You see it? Right there where my finger is? Weird, right? Anyhow, um, got it on a really good deal, so I don't really care too much about that. More with the um, bright blush theme here. Oh, I was supposed to show you. Ooh, look at that. So beautiful. Very bright. That one's in Dream Pop. Wow. That's really pretty. I feel like you'd have to be very light-handed with that one. Otherwise, you're going to have clown cheeks, which I'm not opposed to clown cheeks, but that's a lot. Okay, moving down to the more cream blushes. I have three from the e.l.f. Halo Glow line. This one is in Berry Radiant. I have Rose, Rose, oh, Rose You Slay. And then I have Candlelit. I don't know why I bought so many of these. So that one is Candlelit. You can see this reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Pillow Talk, actually. Not so much a blush, almost like a deeper highlight. Really pretty though. The next one, Rosé You Slay. Where you at? That's really pretty. They're very glowy though, which it is the Halo Glow line, so that makes sense, um, but very glowy. And then last but not least, Berry Radiant. I keep looking off this way, as I've said in prior videos, my monitor is over here. I just want to make sure I'm in focus. Um, this is their deeper shade. It just dries pretty quick. Very beautiful though. Like that's a lot of nice tones there. I love me some blush. Next up for cream blushes, I picked up the Milani Cheek Kiss Blush in the shade Nude Kiss 110. It's very balmy feeling. You can see how wet it looks. Very creamy, very balmy. Oh yeah. Mm, it looks like it's a little patchy. I mean, I am doing this like backwards and on my wrist, but that's not too bad. Very pretty. I also picked up one of the e.l.f. Putty Blushes. This one is in the shade Blush Pate. It's an interesting name. Very pretty pinky blush. I'm noticing it's showing up more peachier on my monitor in person. It's got a slight peach tone to it, but it's more pink. And this has the same consistency as that putty bronzer, and it's very dry feeling. It's that cream to powder formula. Ooh, that's showing up pretty patchy. I think you'd have to probably also... Ooh, and it's pilling. Why is it doing that? That's a little bizarre. Let me try to put that in a different spot. I feel like you'd probably have to be careful with it. It's it's pilling and it's patchy, so I'm not really sure what's up with that. Still pretty, just a little worried about the formula. Last but not least, I picked up four of the liquid blushes from She Glam. So I will show you those very quickly. I have the shade Devoted. Same concept with the little sponge thingamabobby. Okay, I went ahead and wiped off my arm there so we can do more swatches. So it's really hard to do. <laughs> Very beautiful, bright, 
bright red shade. It shears out kind of nicely though, really pretty. A lot of these look the same. When I tried swatching them last night when I first got them, um, a lot of them look the same after they were swatched out. So hopefully it was the lighting or something. I also have the shade Hush Hush. And this one is more of like a nude shade. I really like that, the tone of that. You see what I mean though? Like you could tell there is a tone difference, but I don't know, like they still have, still look kind of similar for being very different. Next up is Rose Ritual. And this one is a really pretty bright pink. Ooh, buddy. I know this is sloppy, so I apologize if that's killing any of y'all, but that's a really pretty shade. And then last but not least, thank goodness, <laughs> is Risky Business. And this one is more of like a cool tone mauve shade, or at least that's what it looks like right now. Oh yeah. That's really beautiful. So, oh, they look rather different now that I've swatched them out like that. Maybe it was the lighting last night. So I'm excited to use any of these. I am struggling with which one to choose. I wanted to pick up one of the Giorgio Armani, uh, one of their new blushes, their silk blushes or whatever they're called. And they're like $38. Um, I was gonna get it on the Sephora sale, but after seeing how many blushes I have in front of me, I just really don't need it. I have so many blushes in my blush drawer, it's not funny. It's the one area of my makeup collection that is absolutely out of control and overflowing, besides eyeshadow palettes. Funnily enough, I haven't been buying too many palettes here lately. I feel like Nowadays, the in thing is the complexion products. Like I don't see very many eyeshadow palettes being released or any palettes being released that spark my interest. So I messed up. Um, thought I was filming, but I wasn't. And I took the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Dream Pop and blended it all over the cheeks. And I showed you the process and it was so beautiful. Um, look how pretty. That's what I used. Dang it. So I don't want to go back over it and be looking like super clownish. So that's what you see on the cheeks. Blended very beautifully, very easily. I tapped it out on this little tray. Well, first I dabbed some of it on the tray and then I took my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and I dabbed it into the blush and then I dabbed all of it right back off until there was hardly any on my brush and then I built it up very slowly. I feel like that is the proper way to use this because if you go straight in and put this right on your cheeks and try to blend it out, unless you have a very deep complexion, it is going to be super bright. It's going to be too much, in my opinion. You do you. That's what you like. Go for it. Ain't nobody going to judge you for it. I won't judge you for it. Um, but that wasn't going to work for me. I'm very fair skinned. So um, putting it on a palette like this, dabbing a lot of it back off, and building up was the better option for me. So I love this. It makes me want to get the rest of them, but I will not because I don't need any more. Okay. Now we're going to move along to highlighter. Do I have it? I do have cream highlighters. Oh boy, I do. I've really been taking my sweet time because I had food show up. So I stopped and I snacked. Um, and you know, here we are. Highlighters. Let me show you. First up is from the e.l.f. Halo Glow Collection. This is in Rose Quartz. And this one is a rosy toned, like a pink highlight. Really pretty. Dries really quickly though. So kind of like the blushes, you got to be really careful. You know, I can see it fine here with a, light, a lot of light shining at it, but when I look at it in person, I don't see a whole lot. So I'm gonna build that up a little bit. It just seems like it wipes away. It's really pretty though, like look at that. There is a bit of a base to it, as you can see when I lay my hand flat, um, but it's really pretty. The next shade that I have from that line is Champagne Campaign, and this is a champagne shade. <laughs> really pretty. It kinda makes me wanna use one of these but I'm afraid it's gonna pull up my makeup. Ooh, I like that one. I kinda like it. The other ones that I have that are cream products are from She Glam. They recently released like multi-chrome highlighters and they're in this packaging here, but they have little doe feet, doe, doe foot. They have the little doe foot um, wand on there. 
So this one is in the shade Solar Flare, and I did swatch these already because I was so excited about them. The only thing that I can say about these, is first of all, they're very they're a very liquidy formula, but when you blend them out, unless you're going to be like really building up, they kind of blend away a little bit. So you'd have to kind of build up if you want it to be kind of like a wow highlight. You know what I'm saying? Very liquidy and creamy. Very pretty. Look at that. So when I'm looking at it on my finger, I see orange and I see a little bit of green. But you guys probably can't see all that just from this angle. And that's the only thing when it comes to multi-chromes. You might see some of the shifts, you might not, depending on the lighting. So again, that was Solar Flare. The next shade I have from that line is Flying Comet. Flying Comet has green in there, if you can see it. Let me share it out for you. I can see purple, but I also saw green at first. Yeah, I put way too much. I was just trying to keep it kind of built up for you so you can actually see it. So that one's more like a white toned highlighter. There is green to it. The formula almost feels kind of oily. I don't know if oily is the right word. Slick? Last but not least is Stardust. I can't remember what shade this one is. I think this one's supposed to be pink. Kind of looks like the last one. In person, it doesn't though. They're just very sheer, I guess is what I'm getting at. They're very sheer, which is a good thing if you're not looking for like that really wow kind of highlight. You're looking for something colorful. This actually looks really pretty now but it still feels greasy. Ooh, yeah, there's like an oiliness to it. I don't like that. I feel like this would have to be something that I'm wearing when I have nothing else on my face because I feel like this is gonna eat right through foundation. I don't know for a fact, and I'm not gonna test it out on today's face because I want this to look nice. So just be forewarned if you're interested in purchasing those. It's a very slick kind of, like I said, I don't know if it's oily that I wanna say, but it's very greasy feeling. I also picked up some powder highlights, because why not? I have one from ColourPop that I grabbed when I went to Ulta and had my little Ulta shopping spree. This one's in the shade Monster, and I don't know what it is with the colorful highlights, but I'm here for it, apparently. This one is purple. This is another one you, you kind of got to build up a little bit. There it is. Still pretty. It's just not like, bam, and that's the kind of highlight that I like, because I'm extra. I also picked this one up from She Glam. This is their Chromazone Lucid uh, multi Chrome Highlighter. This one right here. It's so hard to capture the, the multi Chrome quality to it. It's just showing up like pink, like the one above it. It's really beautiful though. It's got a yellow shift to it, pink, a little orange maybe. Yeah, it's pretty. Next up is the MAC Show Gold Extra Dimension Skin Finish. And y'all, when I tell you that this took my breath away, it took my breath away. I think I bought this off of the MAC website when I bought their bronzers, but look how beautiful this is. It's like next level gorgeous. It is like a pinky orange. It's kind of hard to describe. Kind of hard to see, to be honest with you. It's down here. It's like a peachy pinky type of highlight. Anyhow, it's beautiful. You have to take my word for it. And then last but not least for the highlighters, I picked up a Pat McGrath Labs um, Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighter in Venusian Nude at TJ Maxx. And I was tickled when I saw that it was a TJ Maxx. This is really beautiful. I thought it was going to be too deep for my skin tone. God, that's really beaming, huh? That's gorgeous. It almost looks like coppery. It's weird. In person, it's not quite as deep, and it's just a really shimmery, peachy pink toned highlighter, and it's beautiful. Why do I keep putting it right there? It's not a good place for it. It is a little deep for my skin tone, but I think I can get it to work. It's at the bottom here. So, those are all the highlights. Part of me wants to try that e.l.f. highlighter just to see what happens, because it's so pretty. I'm gonna test it out and see what happens. I wanna see if it removes my base makeup. I don't like how it's got a tone to it though. I feel like it's gonna be too deep for my skin tone. I'm gonna take this brush here from BH Cosmetics. It's their number five. Um, it's from like their marbled collection. 
I'm gonna tap some of that here on my tray. And again, this one is the Halo, what? The Halo Glow Beauty Wand in Rose Quartz. And I'm gonna see what happens when I just try to very lightly tap some on here. I don't want it to pick up my foundation. I'm scared that's what's happening. I can't tell if it's doing a whole lot. I was worried it was gonna be too dark and I don't think it is. Mmm, you guys see that? That's really pretty. I can usually convey it better on this side because the lighting set up. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. Okay, I'm a little concerned when I powder though that it's gonna take all that shine away, but hey, not too bad, like that is glowy. I did not pick up like a foundation powder or a setting powder. I did pick up the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Pressed Powder, and I'm not really sure like what this does. This one's in their translucent glow shade. Like when I swatch it out, it's just like a, a, a sheeny white powder. Smells so nice. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll go over my face with it after I fully set. When I come back, we will talk about eyeshadow and possibly, well, maybe some more base products. I don't know yet, we'll see. Um, and also possibly this uh, pressed powder. Obviously, I've done a few things. I threw the brows on. After I set my face with the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Setting Powder, I went over top of it with the Physician's Formula Butter Glow, the pressed powder I was showing you before I took this little break. And it just adds this sheen. You can kind of see it all over. I mean, I still have the highlight from the Halo Glow, but overall, my skin has this sheen to it, and that's what it's from. So I kind of like it. It's not bad, but it is tinted white, which is a little bit weird. I don't know if you guys can tell. But anyway, we're going to move on. I did forget to show you one other highlighting product. This is nothing new. <laughs> this was a very popular product back in the day. This is from Anastasi Beverly Hills. It's one of their glow kits. And my favorite shade out of here is this one because it's shifty. Um, I got this at TJ Maxx on a really good deal. I think I paid 20 bucks for it, which you can usually get this half off somewhere, which is 20 bucks. Um, but all these shades work for me and I think it's it's, it's nice. I'm trying to debate whether I want to add anything else on base wise. Like, do I really want to add any more bronzer or blush? I feel like I could maybe touch up bronzer a smidge, like literally a smidge. I really want to try the MAC Radiant Light Rosy Skin Finish Bronzer, but I feel like it's going to be a little dark. Let's do it anyway. I'm just gonna tap in here really lightly because I don't wanna add a whole lot more to what I already have going on. I just wanna see the tone. So I'm gonna add some up here. That's really pretty. Oh, I like that. It's got a really nice like pinky red undertone. You see it? I went overboard. I knew I was going to actually. I'm gonna just take my Sonia G brush, my powder brush, and just kind of swirly swirl, try to maybe tone her down a little bit. Why do I do that every time? Oh well, it is what it is. I'm looking beachy and bronze. In terms of like the cheeks, I don't think I really want to add. Maybe just like boop boop. Oh, I love this. But it's super easy to go overboard. I love that though. Okay, so. We got some use out of that. I would like to top off with a blush just very, very, very lightly. I'm thinking, this is exciting. I've already tried Head in the Clouds, the Too Faced blush. I tried this the other day when I was just doing my makeup, so I really don't want to use that. Do I want to get ballsy with it and try Watermelon Rain? Like, woo, doggy. I mean, the only other blush I have that's a powder blush is the House Labs. And that's not much better. So I am going to first sniff the blush because it smells good. We're going to do watermelon rain because I'm living on the edge tonight. Just like a hair, like a tap in once and get out of there type of situation. Oh, wow. It's super pigmented. Goodness gracious. I know it's a lot and I don't care. We're gonna stop right there though. Now I can do a powder 
highlighter. So I'm debating whether I want to do Pat McGee or She Glam. I don't know what eye look I'm going with yet, though. You guys really can't see it. This one's really pretty. It's just not as wow as I would have hoped for. Tell you what, we're going to try that. I'm going to try the She Glam just for shits and giggles. And I'm probably going to go over top of it with my glow kit from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm so sleepy. It's been a long day and I should probably be hanging it up and going to bed, but I really wanted to finish this video. All right. Ooh. <gasps> Uh-oh. Do you see that? Oh man, that's pretty. Ooh. I wasn't expecting it to show up that well. This is one of those things that shows up better like on the cheeks with a with a brush, not so much in a swatch. Look at that. I'm sold. It's a little loud, but you know. It's me, you know what I forgot to do? Look at the nose. Y'all didn't even say nothing to me. I'm going here bare nose, looking all weird. Okay, I need to do something about that really quickly. So I'm gonna take the MAC blush that I just used, or bronzer, not blush, the bronzer that I just used. I'm gonna do one of these numbers. We need some warmth to the nose, to the schnoz. That's better. I like it. Look at that highlighter. Wow. I really like that. This highlighter didn't cost that much either. I feel like it was six or seven bucks. Like what? I don't really see a multi-chrome effect though. Can you all see another color other than pink? All I see is pink. We need to move on. I need to do something with the eyes. So I did pick up a couple of palettes when I was shopping during my little um excursion. I grabbed some ColourPop Super Shock Shadows when I was at Ulta. I have the shade Lady Bird, and this one is a really beautiful sparkly pink. Like, look how metallic that looks. It's really pretty. It's very creamy. Like, look at that. Yeah, she's pretty. And then the other shade that I picked up is Mighty Morphin. This one's not as creamy as Lady Bird, and it's not as opaque. It's really sparkly, it's just not as opaque. It's this one over here, see? Both really beautiful, I don't know why I thought I needed them. The Super Shock Shadows don't last very long. Even if they're stored tightly closed, which mine are, they will dry out probably within like four or five months. That's the experience I've had, but they were so pretty and they were there and I bought them. The other thing that I picked, well, two other things I picked up. The Nubian Earth, by the way, I had points to burn when I went on that shopping trip. So I saved like 60 bucks. Um, but anyhow, I grabbed this, something about neutrals and the sparkles, this shade here was calling out to me. And when you look at it, like from afar, it just looks like a, I don't know, like a duochrome, a sparkly, shade but when you look up close there's all these different colored sparkles in it it's got like blue and yellow and pink and it's really pretty i don't know if i'll be able to get you to see it or not but this is what sold me on the whole palette like look how pretty anyhow some of these other shades are really nice too and it's just a basic pretty neutral color story the other palette that i picked up was the abh norvina volume number two this was the last one that I needed to complete the entire set, and I found it at TJ Maxx, I think for 20 bucks, and I just had to do it. I've, I have every other single Norvina palette besides this one, so I completed my set, and I can now die happy. So Alter Ego reached out to me a couple weeks ago and asked me if they could send me some products, and I was a little hesitant at first because I don't want to give off the impression that I'm going to make like dedicated videos for these prop for PR. Um, so I was very clear and said, you know, if you want to send me some stuff and you know, I may use it, I may not up to you. I just don't want to, I wanted to be very upfront about it. So regardless, they did send me some stuff over. And one of those products was the coastal palette. And this is their rendition basically of the rose quartz palette from Huda Beauty. And I did do swatches side by side, not for you all, but just here at home, I was looking at them. 
and they're pretty darn similar. So I'm thinking in today's video, because I don't want to do anything too crazy elaborate. I really need to wrap this up. I'm thinking we'll do something kind of light with the Coastal palette. And for the month of April, I did a shot my stash and I pulled some of my special shades. So those are the special shades that I pulled. I've got some Cleona, some Touch of Glam, and I have some Terra Moons. And then I think I also pulled some Pastel Rose. So I'm thinking if I use the Coastal palette, I can also use my special shades because the Coastal palette is purple and pink. And I pulled a lot of purple and pink sparkly shades. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and prime my lids with the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Really great for a variety of eyeshadow formulas. So I'm going to get that on really quickly and then we'll go ahead and start playing with this Coastal palette. I had a lot of fun playing with makeup in this video with you all. And I'll be equally as excited when my Sephora order gets in and I can share that with you as well. And then I'm done for a while, y'all. I've been filming a lot of Shop My Stash videos because I really enjoy shopping my stash. Not only does it save me a boatload of money, but I enjoy playing with stuff that I already have because I have so much, I forget sometimes how good certain things are. So it's like rediscovering things all the time. If you're looking for a good eyeshadow base that'll help I didn't just buy this, by the way. I've had this for a long time. But if you're looking for a good eyeshadow base that'll help not only block out, like, veins in your lids and all that stuff, like, you see how it looks just like skin, um, but mattifies and helps keep your eyeshadow on all day, the NARS eyeshadow base is one of the best. It's easy to use and very versatile. And they have different shades, I believe. Like I said, this is going to be a very simple eye look because it's getting late and I'm very tired. And I'm trying to finish this up. I always wait until late in the evening to start filming. And I regret it every single time. I guess it would be helpful if I swatched the special shades first. I usually do that and then I build a look around my special shades. Those are the shades that I'm working with. So yeah, a lot of these would go with this really nicely. Maybe I should just start building a look and we'll figure it out. Because I don't... My brain's becoming too tired to make decisions. I'm sleepy. Okay, I'm going to take the shade Jellyfish, which is just a really light pink. Super light pink. And I'm going to blend that in my crease. And I'm going to build up from there. I've tried Alter Ego before, but it's been a while. So I don't remember what the quality is like. I mean, I can tell you what swatches look like, but in terms of like actual blendability and stuff like that, I don't remember. It's such a light pink, it's kind of hard to see. Just give me something to blend into. Okay, that's good enough for now. Now I'm going to take the shade Breeze, which is a beautiful taupey purple, kind of. And I'm going to build that up into my crease as well. Like I said, this is going to be a very simple look. Nothing crazy. Got a nice tone to it. I like that. Very easy to blend. Okay, now I'm going to take the really deep, well, the deepest matte in the palette. It's called Haze, and it's a really deep purple. And I'm going to pack that on the outer edge and blend that up into my crease as well. I feel like I did a look similar to this with the Ahana Beauty palette. I probably did. The shadows are blending really nicely. All right, now that things are at least semi-blended, I have the shade Lunar Lavender from Terra Moons, and I feel like that will be a nice little addition. You know, I want to, like I said, I want to keep it simple because I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm just going to start tapping this here. That's pretty. I gotta say, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. To finish it off, I think I want to take the shade Palace from Cleona and use that as like an inner corner highlight. So let's do that. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's pretty. I just realized I didn't do anything underneath the eyes. I don't think I'm going to. It's just getting late and I just wanted to share this stuff with you. Play with some makeup today and I feel like we've accomplished that goal. So it's time to get out of there. So pretty. Okay, last but not least, I didn't grab any actual mascaras during my little shopping rampage, but I did grab the Maybelline Sky High Lash Primer. This is kind of interesting because it's black, so you would almost think that it's just like a regular mascara, especially when you put it on, it kind of looks like a regular mascara, but it's a primer. So I've been using this and then putting like, I don't know, Man Eater from Tarte over top of it, or sometimes the Act Natural from ColourPop. So I'm gonna grab a mascara. We're gonna put this on. My brows are whack. Wow. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Don't mind the brows. I lied. I am gonna do a little bit of under eye work because I feel like it looks undone. Now to the lash primer. Like it almost looks like I have regular mascara on, right? I don't know if you're supposed to let this sit for a minute. I never read the directions when I bought it. Whoops. I should find a an eyeliner. Oh, I'm tired. Now I'm gonna take the ColourPop Act Natural Mascara. This is a really good, affordable mascara. And it's one of my favorites right now. I'm just trying to avoid spidery looking lashes because I don't like that. I'm just not a huge fan of the spider lashes. Okay, I'm taking the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Crybaby. It is a go-to for a purple eye looks. I love this cream gel liner. Okay, so I started to put this on already and realized I didn't show you. This is the NYX, and I'm gonna fix it because it looks crazy. This is the NYX, this is Milky Gloss in Ube Milkshake. I think that's how you say that, I'm not 100% sure. But it's just a really pretty, like purpley tone and it goes well with the eye look and it smells nice and I don't think I've ever used it. So I'm gonna fix this and then we will be finished. Okay, so this is the finished look, playing around with newer products that I purchased. I think you all know how I feel about each thing. I was pretty thorough as I was putting those products on. I love the way this looks. I didn't put a lip liner or anything like that on. I just put the gloss so it looks a little crazy, but I'm not dealing with lip liner and all that jazz tonight because I'm about to wipe this right back off. Uh, but I just wanted to get something on to kind of pull the look together. I love this. I hope you all enjoyed hanging out with me and playing around with some newer products. If you did, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed my channel, please be sure to tap the like button on this video. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do that also. Thanks again for hanging out with me and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.